This is the new 2022 Jeep Wrangler Rubicon 392, and it's the ultimate Jeep Wrangler. There have been many Wranglers over the years, but this is the king of them all. It has a 470 horsepower V8 and a starting price of just under $80,000. And today, I'm going to review it. Before I get started, be sure to check out Cars and Bids, which is my enthusiast car auction website for cool cars from the modern era, now with free listings. You can list your car for free and auction it on Cars and Bids. And we've had some great sales recently, including this Mercedes G-Wagon 4x4 squared, which brought more than $230,000. This fantastic new Ford Bronco sold for just under $70,000, and this wonderful Subaru Baja brought $17,500. If you're looking to buy or sell an enthusiast car, truck, or SUV from the modern era, the 1980s and up, Cars and Bids is the place to do it with daily auctions and great selection at carsandbids.com. So let's talk Wrangler 392. For years, enthusiasts have been begging Jeep to put a V8 in the Wrangler, and Jeep hasn't done it, citing emissions and fuel economy regulations. But now the Wrangler is facing stiff competition from the new Ford Bronco, so Jeep has finally given enthusiasts what they want. A Wrangler with a V8, a 6.4 liter Hemi V8 with 470 horsepower. And and it's a Rubicon model to maximize its off-road capabilities. And today, I'm going to review it. First, I'll take you on a quick tour of the new Wrangler 392 and show you some of its interesting quirks and features. Then I'll get it out on the road and drive it, and then I'll give it a Doug score. All right, time for the quirks and features of the Wrangler 392. Now, I've reviewed several versions of the newest Jeep Wrangler and the Jeep Gladiator, the pickup version, so I'm not going to go over everything in detail in this video, but I am going to discuss some of the special 392 things, starting with the engine. Finally, a V8 in a Jeep Wrangler. Enthusiasts have been asking for it for years, and aftermarket companies have been doing it for years, but Jeep has never really put a V8 in a Wrangler. The last time they did this was like the late 1970s. The Wrangler was called the CJ and the V8 made about 150 horsepower. It wasn't anything like today and so this is a really big deal. Now this engine is just the 6.4 liter V8 from Dodge and Chrysler SRT models. This is not the Hellcat supercharged V8 from the Charger and Challenger Hellcat. That would have been insane to put in a Jeep Wrangler. And plus it still makes pretty good power even as is. 470 horsepower is a really strong figure in a Jeep Wrangler. Now, to get air into this engine, there is a massive scoop on the hood. You can see it here, and it is functional. It brings in air and feeds this massive powertrain. And under the hood, you can see it's labeled as the Hydro Guide, I guess because it has some function to separate water from air and make sure that only air gets into the engine and water goes somewhere somewhere else, in case you're fording rivers at high speeds, it won't damage your engine. That is the massive hood scoop. Now, as for performance with this massive engine, zero to 60 in the low four second range. This will run with a Ford Mustang GT zero to 60, and it does a quarter mile in the 12s in a factory Jeep Wrangler. The funny part is that top speed is limited to only 112 miles an hour because of the tires. You don't often hear about vehicles do 0 to 60 in the low fours in a 12 second quarter being limited to 112. But with all terrain tires, they're not really rated for a much higher speed than that. So this is all about acceleration and showing off instead of like top speed cruising on the Autobahn. And speaking of those off-road tires, let's discuss them for a second because they are huge. In fact, they're larger than the regular tires you get standard on the Wrangler 392 because this 392 
1992 has the Extreme Recon package for even more off-road capability and thus even larger tires. And you can see they are massive. Now, the Extreme Recon package costs around $4,000 extra, and not only does it include larger tires, but it also includes beadlock capable wheels. That means you can actually bind the wheels to the tire, which is important if you're doing serious off-roading and rock crawling so the tire and wheel don't separate in extreme circumstances. Beadlock capable wheels are really only on the most serious off-roaders like this one. The Extreme Recon package also includes extra lifted suspension. And I say extra because the standard 392 is already two inches higher than the standard Wrangler thanks to Fox shocks that lift it up for more suspension travel. But with the Extreme Recon package, you get another inch and a half of lift for even more off-road capability. So this thing can really go anywhere. But anyway, next up beyond the Extreme Recon package, moving on to a couple of other interesting quirks and features here. One, the tires are so massive that they stick out beyond the Wrangler's already large fenders. And as a result, Jeep had to tack on these plastic fender shields in order to contain the tires and comply with regulations. And you have that front and rear, which is a good indication that you're looking at one of these with its massive tires. Now, other upgrades of the 392 compared to the standard Wrangler, for one, you got better brakes, which is probably a good thing because it's so much faster and it's also heavier than a regular Wrangler. You also have a strengthened frame, which I suspect Jeep did because they know people are going to do high speed off-road runs in this thing. And so you want the frame to be a little stronger so it doesn't bend when people hit jumps and rocks at crazy speeds. Also worth noting that the 392 is only offered as a four-door. You can't get a two-door model, which is probably a good thing because that would truly be insane, this much power in a smaller wheelbase. Four-door only. Next up, a few other interesting items about the 392. For one, you can see that the wheels have sort of a bronze color to them. That is unique to the 392, and that's because bronze is like the 392's color, and several accent and trim pieces are finished in bronze. For instance, you can see the front toe hooks. They are bronze, and so is all the badging with this vehicle. On the side, you can see Jeep and the trail rated badge. They're all in bronze to celebrate the fact that this is the 392. Now, interestingly, if you didn't know to look for the bronze, you might not even realize you're next to a 392 rather than just a standard Wrangler Rubicon. There are not that many badges. You do have a 392 badge on the hood. You can see on the bump for the air intake. But other than that, it's not especially clear aside from these bronze accents and the massive tires. Now, you do have quad exhausts around back that are unique to the 392 model, but they're sort of hidden. They're not like out in your face like you see in some performance cars. Instead, they kind of point down and you could miss those. But even though they might not be as showy as other quad exhausts, they certainly sound good. Take a listen to the 392. Next up, we move inside the Wrangler 392, where once again, there aren't that many giveaways that this is the 392, not that many 392 specific items. Now, you do have bronze stitching in various places, like on the seat, you can see bronze stitching, same deal on the steering wheel, more bronze, and also the parking brake and the gear selector, the four wheel drive lever, all stitched in bronze, reminding you that that's this car's special color. You also have bronze stitching on the seat that says Rubicon, 392 to remind you precisely what you're in, but that's only on the front seats. The rears don't have it, and otherwise there really isn't any other 392 badging in this interior. It's surprisingly subtle, especially for like a Chrysler Jeep product. Now, one interesting thing with this vehicle, there is no two-wheel drive mode. You cannot go into just rear-wheel drive and do giant Wrangler burnouts. <laughs> it's four-wheel drive only for the 392. And you can see the shift lever here allows you to shift into low range if you want to, if you're really doing some off-roading. And you also have differential lockers because this is a Rubicon front and rear differential lockers, which of course enhance your off-road capability. Now, a few other quirks in here, not related specifically to the 392. One is the roof. 
which is a very, very cool feature of this car. You can see it's like a black roof, doesn't match the vehicle, and it doesn't look plastic. That's because it's a massive sunroof. Jeep knows that most people who buy these like the idea of an open air off-roader, but they also know that most people want a hardtop for practicality and cold weather purposes, so they give you both. This is a hardtop, but with a giant sunroof. You press this button and it opens up automatically over both the front and rear seats to create a full open air vehicle experience, which is cool, but you still keep the roof in place. That way you don't have to take off the hardtop, which can be challenging and time consuming just to get an open air feel in here. You have this massive sunroof. I really like this feature in the Wrangler. And of course, the other feature I like in the Wrangler is all the little Jeep Easter eggs throughout the interior. For instance, at the top of the gear lever, you have a little Jeep. You have a Jeep climbing the windshield, which is kind of a cool look. The climate control has a Jeep on it for recirculating air instead of just a generic car. And same with this button, which is the off-road cruise control. And every time you turn on the 392, you get a little Jeep video playing in your center gauge cluster screen, along with a tiny little Jeep that drives through the bottom of the screen, which is a cool little quirk. I like all those little Jeep Easter eggs integrated into this car makes you feel more Jeep special. Now, one last item that's cool about these Wrangler models and worth noting is this little pouch. It says Jeep on it, comes with each Wrangler. It contains the tools for removing the doors. Taking off the doors in a Wrangler is a very easy process and can be completely done only using these tools. It's a lot easier than in a Ford Bronco, which is a more complex process. All your tools to remove the doors are right here. All right, next up, now it's time to drive the 392. <laughs> the crazy thing about this vehicle, the first crazy thing comes when you start it up and you hear that and it's just not what you should be hearing from a Wrangler. It's not what your mind has trained you to be hearing from a Wrangler for so many years. It's just crazy to hear this big V8. But the really crazy thing happens when you floor it. is it doesn't feel that fast like it's quick obviously but it's not like insane but it feels really fast for what it is a wrangler and it the sound is absolutely amazing so you have this immense sound and then you have this just it is brutal acceleration for for this vehicle and you actually do feel a little unsettled frankly i've been driving this around a little bit and if you go hard especially into a corner you don't have a lot of confidence <laughs> <laughs> Definitely a little bit nervous about this. And I'm glad they didn't do this in a two-door because I think that would have been really a recipe for disaster. As it is, people are gonna do really irresponsible stuff with this and modify this engine for even more power. Now, that's not to say that this doesn't drive well. In fact, quite the opposite. I think this drives very nicely. Um, maybe even a little bit better than a regular Wrangler. V8s are real smooth and it just kind of gives it a little bit more I don't want to say confidence because when you floor it, you, that's the last thing you feel. <laughs> but you do feel like you're a little more, I don't know, like brawny and planted on the ground and you have a little bit more of that sort of feel. It still doesn't feel like a G-Wagon or a new Defender like bank vault, you know, nice. But you do have a pretty, pretty good uh, feel in this vehicle. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right, all right. That is pretty cool. That is pretty cool, I admit it. So anyway, uh, I think that the real fun of this vehicle obviously comes from just mashing the throttle and seeing what it can do both on-road and off-road. Obviously, a big thing that's coming that everybody knows is coming is the Bronco Raptor. And it's kind of funny, Jeep has forever denied that they were gonna put a V8 in a Wrangler, they're gonna do anything like this. And I think that the Bronco has finally forced their hand a little bit. It's like, hey, you Jeep, you finally have a little competition. You got to do some stuff to make people a little happier. And this is one of the things, obviously, that they've done. The new Bronco is cooler than the Wrangler. Everybody knows that. It's the really exciting, special vehicle coming. Um, and the Raptor version is probably going to be even more insane. But it is neat that they kind of push Jeep into doing this 
because this is, if you're into the Wrangler, this is an amazing thing. Truthfully, when you're not flooring it, this does feel a lot like a regular Wrangler. I think the V8 provides a little bit more stability. It just gives you a little bit more confidence in the car. Um, having more power always does help with that. You can dart around something if an obstacle comes up, that sort of thing. But other than that and the sound, you know, from inside, driving in, it really feels a lot like a regular Wrangler. The real drawback here, I think, is pricing. These are, you know, I said they start around 76, 77,000, but with options a mid 80s and markups right now take them into the 90s, I think. And that's just an enormous amount of money to spend for a Jeep Wrangler, no matter how many horsepower it has, especially because there are a lot of aftermarket V8 swaps that are done really well that you can get cheaper. But a lot of people aren't gonna to wanna to go down that road and I don't blame them. Here is a factory back high performance Wrangler. It gives you all the power of like a sports car and it gives you all the off-road capability of a Jeep and it is certainly something special. It's just that you're paying up for it. And so that's the Jeep Wrangler Rubicon 392. This is an impressive vehicle with insane power, but it's also like 80 grand plus for a Jeep, which is a lot of money to spend, particularly with the new Bronco Raptor coming out. Still, if you want the ultimate Jeep, this is it. And now it's time to give the Wrangler 392 a Doug score. And the Doug score is here, 62 out of 100, which places the Wrangler 392 in great company against rivals. This is the best Wrangler ever. It combines the acceleration of a sports car with the capability of a serious off-roader. And I think it's more amusing than a Raptor or a TRX and more capable. The Wrangler 392's biggest drawbacks are pricing, which is absolutely massive, especially with today's market adjustments, and frankly, the fact that it doesn't look very distinctive from a regular Wrangler, which I think is a mistake. Part of the reason why the Raptor is so successful is just how much more mighty it looks. Still, the Wrangler 392 is awesome. Compromised, flawed, inefficient, and absolutely awesome. Ah!